Well, good morning. It's 8 a.m. Uh, March 30th, Monday morning. Um, maybe this Monday is going to be a little different than others for some of us. Uh, most of us, I think, are used to getting up and going to work right now, and um, a lot of us aren't. So um, I hope you made it through last week well. Um, yeah, it's just uh, it's crazy. Um, God's still in control. And uh, so this morning we're going to work through another psalm together. Um, we're going to just read through it, talk through it a little bit, hopefully start your day outright. Because, you know, one of the good things about this, uh, you know, we need to look for the lemonade moments of the lemons that we're dealing with. And, um, you know, one of the things that I'm taking on in this is just helping make sure that I have a morning Devo and, um, you know, maybe that could be a good goal for yourself as we um, now have all the time in the world. Sometimes I would go, oh, I don't have time. I don't have time. But God gave me plenty of time now. <laughs> so um, hopefully we can, this, these are some disciplines we can put in place and in our lives uh, before uh, we go back to normal, if that's even going to be a thing um, at some point. So yeah, so we're going to look at uh, Psalm 84 here. So uh, it says this, it says, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul yearns and even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. You know, we start here with just the the beauty and the um, the majesty of of where God is and in his dwelling place, you know, the psalmist talks talks about here, and he talks about that he even faints for the courts of the Lord, and that his heart and his flesh cry out for the living God. I mean, that's a it's a pretty powerful statement that every piece of David's being is just crying out uh, for God. Um, also, if you uh, went to church camp in in the eighties at all, you heard that psalm sung out loud, uh, which I'm not going to sing right now. Uh, verse three. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your, your altar. O Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. This is a, you know, he sits here and he talks about it. Even the sparrow has found a home. You know, in the midst of all of this, we're going to have these moments when, um, Things are going to get a little weird. Things might get a little scary. We might feel like we don't have enough of something. Um, I don't know that anybody has enough of enough toilet paper currently. But I think this is a reminder to us that he says, Even a sparrow has found a home and a swallow a nest for herself. God is providing for his people. God is giving them what they need. Not necessarily what we want. But what we need, you know, I uh, when I used to do student ministry and we would talk about prayer, we I would say, you know, some of us feel like we need a four wheeler, mm, unless you live in the woods or can like really make a good excuse for that. You don't need a four wheeler. You want a four wheeler, and here what the sparrow needs is a home, and God has provided that. And this also echoes Matthew six when Jesus is talking about, don't worry. Like, and he uses the birds of the field and the flowers, and he's going, look how beautiful they are. Look how I have clothed them. Look how I have given them all of these things. And so, um, you know, a great takeaway for us is that God, God's got us. God's under, got this under control. Um, he's going to take care of uh, his people. And, um, you know, he, show, he uses the, the sparrow as that example. Um, in verse 5, he says, Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who, has, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cool, cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. In verse 5, he says, Blessed are those whose strength is in you. You know, th this is a very familiar refrain um, or similar thought throughout the Psalms that you know, whoever puts their strength in God is going to be blessed because, I mean, God is God. God created this world, made you and me. You know, how, uh, who else should we put our 
strength in? Who else should we put our confidence in? Who else should we put our trust in but the God of the universe? It's um, So in some ways, it's a very, it should be an obvious statement, but in moments of crisis and moments of trial in my own life, um, do I always put my strength in God? Do I always put my trust and my confidence in Him? No, because a lot of times I think I can do it better. Um, and then God reminds me of that, no, you can't. And I go, oh yeah, you're right, I'm sorry. Um, verse 7. Or, I'm sorry, verse 8. Hear my prayer, O Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, O God of Jacob. Look upon our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed, on your anointed one. And then verse 10, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No, God, no good thing does he withhold from those who walk in blameless, whose walk is blameless. So there's that, um, there's that old, uh, old praise chorus again, right? Uh, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. And, um, I remember being at camp, re-singing the song and just, just singing and singing and singing and just go. And at one point I just went, I don't even, what is this? Where does this come from? What does this even mean? And, you know, uh, as I got older or maybe one of my counselors or somebody went, oh, you know, it's actually in the Bible. And I went, oh yeah. But better is one day in the courts of God than a thousand elsewhere. You know, one could even argue that better is one minute in the presence of God than thousands of minutes doing anything else. And so that's this idea here that the psalmist is getting at. And he says, I would rather be the doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. He would rather be the guy opening the door for everybody else to come in than he would be in the tents of the wicked. And he says, and that towards the end of verse 11, no good thing does he withhold, he being God, for those whose walk is blameless. There's this promise here again that, um, and when we say no good, no good thing does he withhold, does it mean you get everything you want as we were just talking about? No. But it does mean that we have a loving, caring father who is looking out for us, who is, um, who is taking care of us. Jesus talks about this also in the Sermon on the uh, when he, I believe in the Sermon on the Mount when he talks about like giving good gifts, and uh, that if we as humans can do that, how you know how much greater is God going to do that for us? And so he says, no good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. And then last uh, verse twelve here of Psalm eighty four, he says, O Lord Almighty. Blessed is the man who trusts in you. You know, that's a, it's a tough thing right now, right? Um, many of us uh, look around and we're not sure what's coming next. You know, Emily and I were talking about this last night. That it's just, some of it is just the unknown, you know, that we've lost um, at least a sense, right? Like, because maybe we never had... Um, full control of what's going to happen. Well, we didn't, right? But we all had rhythms. We all had patterns. We all did life in a certain way. And um, now we just don't know day to day. But, but the psalmist says in verse 12, O Lord Almighty, blessed is the man, blessed is the woman, blessed is the people who trusts in you, trusts in God. And so maybe today, that just was where we should stop here and just make that your prayer. God, let me trust in you today. Help me to see through all of this. Help me not to worry about that I don't have control. Um, help me not to worry about that I don't know what's coming next. Um, but that I can rely on the God of heaven. The God who created us. The maker and sustainer of everything. That my trust can be in him can be in you if we're praying this right that um that i that, that that's what i can do that i can give my life in that way today overcoming everything that's going on around me so let me pray for us uh, as we just close our time together god we 
Thank you for another day of life as the sun rises. Um, God, we thank you for um, our health. We ask for uh, your intervention and the people in our lives who um, are sick and are affected by this uh, virus, Father. We continue to pray and ask for energy, um, health, uh, safety for those who are on the front lines of this. God, would you continue to protect them? Would you speed up the uh, different things that will help make their jobs easier and uh, safer? And um, God, would you just help us put our trust in you? Would you help us today as we go through our day? Um, just, uh, just help us trust you more. Help us remember that we're not in control as much as we like to think we are. And that you have got this all handled and that... Um, you are still God, and you are still in control. God, we thank you for Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. We just pray all of these things in his powerful name. Amen. Well, today, I hope you have a great day. I hope you um, get some coffee, if that is your uh, way you start your day. I saw somebody uh, comment last week that Pepsi is the way they go. However it is, whatever kind of caffeine, I pray that you find it, that you get it. Um, enjoy it and um, yeah have a blessed day we'll see you tomorrow morning